to allow record. Okay. So, Something changed go? here. We're recording. Thanks, everybody. Okay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> okay. okay. I think you need to share your screen again, though. Okay. There we go. Good Great. stuff. Okay. Let me uh, read mode. All right. Here we go. Good stuff. Thank you, Mia. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, just to introduce our team again, I'm Charlotte. Hi, everyone. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the education manager. Jenya, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Glad to see you all here. I'm Jenya Cassidy. I am the director of the Statewide California Work and Family Coalition. And uh, go ahead, Katie. And I'm Katie. I'm the political organizing director. My pronouns are she and her. You all have heard me talk a lot. Mia here, pronouns she, her. And I don't know if Angelica's, uh, her internet's been a little iffy today. Yeah, um, I think she's not able to join at the moment, but Angelica is our administrative assistant. She is fluent in Spanish, as well if, any, if anyone needs, uh, would like to communicate in Spanish um, email wise, Angelica's there. And she's also working very closely with me um, with the education program as far as like our Spanish uh, program. So she's been super great. So that is our team. And to remind everyone, we are the California Work and Family Coalition. We are an alliance of very diverse organizations united in the belief that everyone and all people should have time and resources to care for themselves and each other. So today for our second training session, our training goals are one, to review the paid leave, paid family leave information, uh, job protection laws, increase our understanding of paid sick and safe days, and then apply our knowledge of paid family leave and job protection to the paid leave checklist. The agenda today is start with a review, go through some scenarios, uh, review some paid sick and safe day laws, understand how we request leave from some of the resources that we'll provide. Have a good Q&A session. I promise we'll have a longer Q&A session today. So if you came with questions today, that is a great time to ask that. Um, we're gonna do a paid family leave case study. Um, and I know last week I said that we were gonna do breakout rooms this week, but based on evaluations and that we did, you know, kind of rush through the content last week, I thought today we can just focus on the content a bit more. And as a group, we can go through scenarios and talk about how we apply this information. So definitely third training, we will definitely do breakout rooms, but today let's just increase our self-efficacy of knowing this information and applying this information together as a group. So we're gonna get through it together, talk about some next steps, and then we'll have a final Q&A before we wrap up. So let's get started with the review. So last week, we talked about paid family leave. Paid family leave provides partial wage replacement for California workers who need time to take off to bond with a child or a new, a new child or a seriously ill family member. This is a partial, this is a wage replacement program. It is 60 to 70% of your normal wages. This is up to 1300 a week as of 2020, and this is up to eight weeks as of July 1st, 2020. So you can take up to eight weeks of paid family leave, which it, by taking those eight weeks, you'll receive 70 to 60% of your wages, um, and then you can use this to bond with a new child, foster child, or a seriously ill family member. This can be taken all at once or in parts, so you can take all the eight weeks all at once, or you, maybe you can take four weeks at one time and then four weeks another time uh, within that 12-month period, but you do have, once you apply for it, you do have to use that time within the 12-month period. <clears throat> So eligibility for paid family leave, the main eligibility in, um, that you really need to know is that the individual we're working with or you yourself um, pays into the state disability insurance. So as you see here, this graphic, when you look at your pay stub, if you see CA, state disability insurance, that means you're eligible for paid family leave. You are paying into the system. It is not a benefit. It is your right. You pay into the system. Um, another eligibility is that you're taking this leave to care for a new child or need to take care of a seriously family ill member. Those are the most basic things that you need to know. But the most important is that you pay into the disability insurance system, that is what qualifies you. 
something that we really do emphasize that I feel like not a lot of people do know, um, but it's so important to know is that citizenship and immigration status do not affect eligibility um, for paid family benefits. This is not asked on the application. There is no question of what is your citizenship or immigration status. Rather that this is your right as a California worker in this state that you pay into this system and it is your right to take care of your family and yourself. So that is paid family leave. And we do want to emphasize paid family leave is a wage replacement program only. It does not require your employer to give you your job back when you return from leave, which is why there are job, protected, job protection laws. So there is Family Medical Leave Act, FMLA, CIFRA, California Rights Act, New Parent Leave Act, but that is tentative and we'll talk about why that is tentatively in place, and then Pregnancy Disability Leave. So let's talk about New Parent Leave Act real quick. So as of January 1st, 2021, NPLA, New Parent Leave Act, will be no longer in effect because CIFRA, California Rights Act, will be expanded. So if you remember from our first training, we talked about SB 1383, which is a huge win for the coalition and everyone who want, we've been fighting for a job protection for. So this means that uh, eligibility requirements will be expanded and we'll talk about that now. So eligibility. So FMLA, CIFRA, and currently for at least the next two months, NPLA, the four main eligibilities is that one, you have to take, you have to be working at your job for one year that you should have worked at least 25 hours a week, adding up to 1,250 hours worked within that year. Currently, for the next two months, you have to work for caregiving leave. You have to work with at least 50 or plus employees, so your employer should have 50 or plus employees. And for new parents for a bonding leave, should have 20 or plus employees. So you see the asterisk, so that means, let's talk about that real quick. So as of January 1st, 2021, all employees who work with an employer with five or more employees and meet the other requirements of working for at least 12 months at your job and working at least 25 hours a week will qualify you for job protection. So this is great. This is fantastic. This is what SB 1383 is. We have expanded job protection. This means six million more Californians have the opportunity to take leave because it has been dropped down to five or more employees. So this is fantastic. But like I said, with the asterisks, this is as of January 1st. 2021, which means the current laws is, is 50 or plus employees for caregiving, 20 plus employees for new parents. So that is for at least the next two months for anyone who's planning to take leave and job protection um, in the near future. And then another um, job protection is pregnancy disability leave. This is up to four months of unpaid job protected leave with, while disabled by pregnancy, childbirth, or a related condition. This applies to all employers with five or plus employees. This can be used for prenatal care. Um, it can be used all at once or in parts. Your health benefits will continue while you're on this leave. Um, for an uncomplicated pregnancy, pregnancy disability leave is typically typically uh, used four weeks prior to the estimated due date and, and six or eight weeks after the birth. So six or eight weeks really depends if it's six weeks on a complicated pregnancy, so a very much natural birth, or eight weeks when you have a C-section or a complicated pregnancy. So it's very based on um, scenario-based, but this is another job protection. So after that, now we're going to go into some scenarios. Katie's going to take us through some scenarios. Um, I do want to, Katie, before you start, I just want to, hence, I know um, last week I did send out an email with the PDFs of um, the first training. If you have that, that would be great on hand. We're going to go through three scenarios and we'll be asking you guys some questions. So it'd be really great to remember these eligibility requirements to help you go through those scenarios. Um, but yeah, Katie, if you want to take it away with our three scenarios. Sure. Um, so what we're going to do with these scenarios is see how all of these laws um, interact and come together in some real life uh, situations. So our first scenario is with um, someone named Fred. So Fred and his partner, Julia, are expecting a baby. Um, Fred has worked for his employer, employer for seven years, works 30 hours a week and has about 25 coworkers at his job. Um, Fred looked at his pay stub and saw that 
California State Disability Insurance is removed from his pay each pay period. So we have two questions about Fred, and we'd like everyone to put responses in the chat. Don't worry about getting it right or wrong. Um, we just want to see kind of what you all think. So based on this information on this slide, does Fred qualify for paid family leave for bonding? Yes or no? Um, and whatever your first guess is, please enter it in the chat. We'll see what people say. That's right. Yep. Once a couple people go, I realized everyone <laughs> starts to get a sense, right? So most people are saying yes. Um, one person said no. Um, so that's great. Um, so yes, um, Fred would qualify for paid family leave for bonding because we know that he pays into the California State Disability Insurance Fund. Um, so how about job protection? So based on the information that you have on this slide, um, do you think that Fred would qualify for job protection while he's on leave? Yes or no? And again, it's okay. Or you can also say, I don't know if you're not sure. Someone saying no. Someone saying yes. This is great. Um, all right, so Charlotte, do you mind going to the next slide so we can do our reveal on both questions? Yes. Sorry. Nope. So sorry. No worries. Technical difficulties. That's okay. You're fine. There we go. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so Fred actually would qualify for both paid family leave for bonding and for job protection based on the information that we learned on the first slide. So again, um, he would qualify for paid family leave for bonding because he pays into the SDI fund. Um, the reason why Fred would qualify for job protection is because he needs the leave to bond with a new baby. So that's the reason why he needs the leave. Um, he works for an employer um, with 20 or more employees. Um, he's worked at his job for seven years, which is longer than one year. Um, and he's worked more than 1,250 hours in the past year. And honestly, I would say just whip out a calculator. <laughs> you know, there's 52 weeks in a year. Ask someone, you know, if you know about how many hours per week, you can um, use a calculator to figure out how many hours that would be. Um, and so he'd be able to take up to 12 weeks of job protected leave to bond with his baby. So yeah, every, um, most people are um, right on track with this. And then if you can go to the next slide, Charlotte, that would be great. Um, so this is a really handy guide that just goes over those three. Um, ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so maybe it was the wording too, right? So um, it's that and that could be unclear. So yeah, it's, SCI is taken out of his paycheck, then yes, he does qualify. But you're absolutely right that if he weren't paying into SCI, then he wouldn't qualify. Yeah. Um, so just to highlight here for, um, for Fred, under current law, um, it is important to know whether someone's taking the leave for bonding or caregiving um, because there are different requirements for how large their company would have to be depending on the reason why they're taking the leave. Um, what's great about one of the great things about SB 1383 passing is that it's less for all of us to remember when we're helping people um, assist our, our assist folks. Um, so yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Kimberly. So let's look at how these two things kind of put, work together. So if you can see here, Fred would qualify for up to eight weeks of uh, wage replacement. Um, but up to 12 weeks of job protection. So Fred potentially could take a total of 12 weeks um, if he were able to take some of that time unpaid, which we know not everyone can do. So again, long-term goals, right? We want people to have both job protection and pay, um, but that's how this kind of fits together for him. So some of the time he'd get both wage replacement and job protection, and some of the time he would just qualify for job protection. So let's go to the next scenario. All right, so now we're gonna look at a scenario with uh, someone we're calling Claire. So Claire's spouse was just diagnosed with cancer and will need chemotherapy treatments every week for six weeks. 
So Claire wants to see if she can take time off from work to care for her spouse for the six weeks that he is receiving chemotherapy. She has worked for him for, for 14 months, works 40 hours a week, and works for a large employer with 100 employees. She looked at her pay stub, and I'm going to change the wording on this, she's paying into SBI. Um, so based on this information, um, what do you all think? Will Claire qualify for paid family leave for caregiving? Yes or no, or I don't know. Yes. So resounding yes in the chat, that is correct. And how about job protection? Excellent, yeah, so resounding yes in the chat. So let's look at why um, on the next slide. So yes, so again, paying into SDI. Um, and then the reason why Claire would qualify for the 12 weeks is because she's caring for her spouse. So it's a family member who's covered. Her family member has a medical condition that she could get certified. Um, she works for a large employer, so with 50 or more employees. She's worked for more than a year, just 14 months. So she'd worked for less than a year, then she wouldn't have met all of the requirements. And she's worked more than 1,250 hours in the past year. So again, this is where we see employer size is really important right now um, in, as of January 1st. So when folks take leave after January 1st, um, it'll be five or more employees for all of these situations. Uh, next slide. So one of the things I wanted to highlight here, so Claire would be eligible for the same amount of total wage replacement and job protection. So eight weeks of wage replacement and 12 weeks of job protection. Um, and as you can see here, she would get the wage replacement and the job protection both for the six weeks, but Claire would still have two weeks left of wage replacement and potentially six weeks of job protection. So if Claire's um, spouse needed more support, um, then potential, as long as she meets all of the requirements um, for the California Family Rights Act, again, so doing the math on her hours, um, presumably all other um, factors about her job would stay the same. She could potentially take um, additional time um, within that year because she would still have six weeks and then still have the two weeks of pay. Um, one important thing to know is that you can't roll over paid family leave. So it's a total of eight weeks in any given year. Um, and it is a more common situation for caregivers that they might need to take um, a shorter amount of time, but more frequently. So any clarifying questions about that, feel free to put in the chat um, and we will answer them because I know that uh, can be a little confusing sometimes. Um, next slide, please. All right, so now we're gonna look at a scenario for a pregnant parent. Um, so Meg is pregnant and is expecting her first baby to be born in January of 2021. She has 10 coworkers, um, works 20 hours per week, um, and has been at her current job for one year. She looked at her paycheck and she does pay into California State Disability Insurance. So there's a couple more sort of things to keep in mind with someone who is pregnant um, and will be taking leave uh, as a pregnant parent. So looking at this first question, what do you all think? Does Meg qualify for pregnancy disability leave? That is right. Yes, she would qualify for pregnancy disability leave. How about um, paid family leave for bonding? Yep, that's right. This is great. Um, and then how about for job protection while on bonding leave? Right, so we've got some no's, some yeses. Uh, let's go to the next slide and we will get into the details on this. All right, so yes, Kelly pointing out that this is January 2021. So um, Meg, yes, would qualify for pregnancy disability leave because she is pregnant and she works for an employer with five or more employees. 
as a reminder, typical leave for pregnancy disability leave lasts four weeks before the estimated due date and six to eight weeks after an uncomplicated birth. Um, and Meg, because she pays into SBI, would be able to receive partial wage replacement while she's on pregnancy disability leave. Um, and paying into SBI also qualifies her for paid family leave for bonding. Um, and however, Meg would not qualify for job protection for bonding leave because she only meets three out of the four requirements for job protection. She is bonding with a new baby. She works for an employer with five or more employees. So yes, it's January 2021, so SB 1383 would be in effect. Um, she's worked at her employer for more than one year, but because she hasn't worked enough hours, she's only worked 1,040 hours in the past year, um, that's where she wouldn't meet the threshold for job protection. So to review here, um, we need all of these requirements need to be met. And again, this is why we're always working to expand protections because we know that there are folks who fall through the cracks, especially with the hours requirement. Um, you know, and that's not something that you even necessarily have control over, right? <laughs> How many hours you're, you're working at your job. Um, so again, this is, yeah. Oh, thanks, sorry. So, um, I was just going to say that this, the three and four will change um, as of January, and it will be five or more employees for all, um, for all workers. Next slide. Thanks. So let's look at how this all fits together for someone in Meg's situation who qualifies for everything except for job protection for bonding leave. So for the first part of her leave, she would get wage replacement through state disability insurance and job protection through pregnancy disability leave. Then when pregnancy disability leave has ended and she's looking at bonding leave, so um, pregnancy disability leave is considered ended once um, the person is no longer disabled by pregnancy, birth, or related condition, right? So then paid family leave is for bonding, and that's where she would need to look at, yes, she could get wage replacement, but um, her, lawyer, her employer wouldn't be legally obligated to accommodate her request for um, paid family leave for bonding. Um, remember, if Meg has a complicated birth um, and her doctor feels that she needs more time to recover, then that pregnancy disability leave could potentially be extended, um, and that would extend job protection, and then she might be able, or she would be able to get wage replacement through uh, state disability insurance. Um, and then this is what it would look like for someone who's eligible for job protection as well. So similar setup, right? Um, initially, a pregnant parent would get job protection through pregnancy disability leave, wage replacement through state disability insurance, um, but then for bonding leave, they would have job protection as well as the wage replacement. So any clarifying questions on any of these scenarios, especially for the pregnant parent? And we're gonna give all of this to you so that you do not have to remember it. You can refer back to the slides and materials um, depending on what populations you're working with. I know some folks on this call are working with pregnant parents, so this is a pretty common situation. Other folks might be working more with caregivers. So please um, feel free to put any clarifying questions in the chat. Great question. So state disability insurance is a wage replacement program only. So it's like paid family leave and that it doesn't qualify you for job protection. And the way that we um, explain that might not have made that clear. Um, the pregnancy disability leave is job protection only, um, but typically people will have already been paying into the SDI fund. And so those um, job protection and wage replacement typically it's typical for them to line up. Um, great question about SDI wage replacement. Um, so she would have to apply for the SDI wage replacement through the EDD. Yeah, and the, what she um, and her responsibility would be to notify her employer of her request for leave. Um, so I know that we um, have some new information about paid sick and safe days. 
So if you have further questions about this, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll answer them during the question and answer session. So I'll hand it back to Charlotte. All right, thanks, Katie. Yeah, so that was all great. For those who have uh, state disability insurance questions, uh, we also have a couple slides in the training one uh, PDF slides. So if you didn't get those, let me know um, just in case you need review. And like Katie said, if you have more questions, put them in the chat and we'll answer them during Q&A. I just want to go over some paid sick and safe day information that we weren't able to go over last week. So what are paid sick and safe days? Um, paid sick and safe days are for all California workers working 30 or more days within a year must be given a minimum of three sick days. This is a law. So if you work 30 more days in California, you have to be given a minimum of three sick paid paid sick days. Um, but there is, uh, it is a bit different per county. For example, Berkeley, Oakland, San Francisco, LA, um, those local laws have been expanded. So some employers may be giving more than three paid sick days. And we will be providing a resource this week where you can find that information um, where you live and if your local laws have been expanded. So paid sick and safe days can be used for your own illness or care for a seriously ill family member. This includes diagnosis, care, treatment, an existing health condition or preventative care like a wellness checkup or, you know, getting your flu shot. Um, they also, they can be used to seek care or services related to domestic violence and sexual assault or stalking. So that's why we also call it safe days. Um, it's when you do seek those um, domestic violence services. They are, paid sick and safe days are 100% of your regular prey. This does carry job protection. Eligibility requirements is that you must be employed at your job for at least 90 days, worked in the state of California for 30 days, and have accrued the time for leave. Employers cannot deny you requests for paid sick days, and they don't have to know the specifics as to why you're taking these sick days. You should notify your employer as soon as you can um, when you do take your sick days but of course it is understandable that it, illnesses and emergencies are unanticipated and it's okay to know your, notify your employer as soon as it's po um, practical and possible. Your employer cannot require you or a co to f require you to find a co-worker to cover your absence um, as a condition of using leave. Your employer cannot require documentation such as a doctor's note um, as a condition of using leave, unless you're taking three or more sick days in a row. Um, and you can decide how much you're using paid sick time. Um, for example, you can use half a day of work, but your employer can require you to use at least two hours of a time. So let's do a, a couple quick poll questions. Let's see. Oh, Katie, are you able to do the poll questions? It's not showing up on my end. Katie? Can folks see the poll? I can see the poll. Okay. Okay. Cool. So true or false, you can use paid sick and safe days for preventative care or seek care for domestic violence services. And if Katie can let me know. Yeah, yeah. So I, please enter your responses um, for the poll. Not sure how many folks have answered. And yes, Kimberly, we need sick or safe days. All right, let's try ending the poll and see if it worked. <laughs> <Good. laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know that folks were able to, were people able to vote on the poll? Can you just share in the chat? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's see. Sharing results. All right. So on my end, I'm not able to see the results. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, no. Okay. Like, Charlotte. Like, no, maybe fine. let's use the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the results, good. it says 100% true. Okay. Oh, great. Great. Teamwork. 
So yes. (laughs) Yeah. So great job. Yes. You can use pays in six days for preventative care or seek care for domestic violence uh, prevention services. So let's do another poll question. Uh, True or false, paid sick and safe days do not have job protection and employers can legally deny you leave. I can see the poll question, just letting y'all know. Okay, cool. If you want to let us know the answers. Yeah, I will. (laughs) Great. All right, so we'll give folks a couple seconds to respond here. All right, 10 more seconds, so now or never, no pressure. (laughs) (laughs) All right, can people see the results? I can see the results. Um, 11% said true, paid sick and safe days do not have job protection and employers can legally deny you leave. And 89% said false. Um, Go ahead with the response. All right. So false. Um, totally get it. If, um, you know, this is a lot of confusing. While paid family leave doesn't have it, paid sick and safe days do have it. So to reiterate, paid sick and safe days do carry job protection. To qualify for that, you must be employed at your workplace for 90 days, worked in the state of California for 30 days, and have acquired that time for leave. And employers cannot legally deny you requests for paid sick and safe days. So we talked about this real quickly at the last, uh, the first presentation. I just want to address this again. There's multiple ways to ensure your rights. Um, As Katie mentioned, like talk to your doctor and medical provider, you know, when you're taking pregnancy disability leave, bonding leave, caring for your individual uh, family member, or even your own sickness, it's really important to talk to your doctor to know when you're going to be taking that leave and how long. Talk to your employer. Um me you know let them know that you're anticipating when you're when you're pregnant when you're t- caring for your family member and we have um some resources that you can utilize when you're talking to your employer if you need more information uh, specifically about you know unemployment sdi paid family leave the edd website has a great resources and we'll be providing this week um, when i email everyone there's going to be a resource link and contact information the edd has multiple languages and uh, chinese spanish Tagalog, Arabic, that should you can definitely utilize. Also, the most important thing is document your communication. Get everything in writing so there's a record. You know, there have been some cases where employers may fire the worker for taking leave, and that is illegal, right? Like, when you have it, um, that is illegal for them to do that. So this is why it's so important to document everything that's going on. And even if that doesn't happen, you have a fantastic employer. Either way, it's just so important to document everything. To do so and to know you're like um, saying it properly, one of our resources this week will link you to Legal Aid at Work, one of our partners. And here you can download um, requests for different leaves um, in English, Spanish, and Chinese. And when you download this, it will help you fill it out. So as you see here on the right corner, it tells you one, what, where to put your name, date, and what, how to fill it out. It explains your right under pregnancy, disability leave, and bonding leave. So you're Employer can't really question like what is this like it's listed here so this is really great to email to fax or even just to hand in person but always keep your own for your own record and this is also another importance of talking to your medical um, provider for example in four I anticipate I will need to um, the leave of absence um, from this time to this time so that's where your medical provider comes in Another sample letter that Legal Aid at Work has is requesting for sick uh, paid sick leave. Like we said, like un- uh, emergencies happen that you might not be able to request it ahead of time, and that's fine, you know. But just to keep it transparent with your employer, you can fill this out, and it doesn't specifically say what you're taking the leave for, but it keeps it transparent enough, saying that you're suffering from illness, injury, or taking preventative care, or you're taking care of an ill family member. And this is great just to email or hand in yourself, just to be transparent as to you're taking this leave and this is your right. 
So those are going to be some of the resources we provide this week. Um, and now let's have our uh, first Q&A session. So if anyone has some questions as far as the content today, scenarios, if you guys came with questions from last week, um, yeah, let's we'll give those a go now. And if Jenya, if also you want to uh, jump in during this time, that'd be great. So I'm yeah, so we're gonna be. Oh, go ahead, Mia. Sorry, I was just saying I want to make sure that the people who submitted first get responded to. So I'm gonna be lining them up one at a time. Oh, good. Go ahead with the first one. I put it in the chat. Oh, good. So that's a great way to do it. So I'm gonna start with the first one that you're putting them in order. Mm -hmm. So the first question is a really good question. Um, does a pregnant parent have job protection under state disability, but not under paid um, family leave? And um, that is, so basically it's not so much that the SDI is exactly giving you job protection because it is a fund, it's a benefit, and it's, you're basically getting the money, right? Not necessarily the protection. Um, but most pregnant workers would be covered under pregnancy disability leave. Um, so they would have job protection under that. And it's just far more protective um, in at least now, I mean, we're really ramping up job protection starting in 2021. But for the way the law works now, pregnancy disability leave is our most protective law covering employers of five or more. So the vast majority of pregnant workers would be covered under um, pregnancy disability leave. So I hope that answers that. <laughs> and yeah, in paid family leave, you'd be covered under another type of job protection for caring or for um, bonding. So another question, and I don't have the name of um, the people anymore, but I think that's it's a question a lot of people have, a friend asking if they have to apply for SDI wage replacement before pregnancy disability leave, or if that's uh, the employer's responsibility. And the way SDI works, um, part of why the complexity of you know, separating our job protection from our wage replacement is if you think about it, the job protection is much more between you and your employer where you're getting that time off, you want to be sure you can return to your job. Obviously, having a brief amount of time off would not be worth losing your whole job. Um, but the wage replacement is between you and the EDD, where you often need certification. So most people's experience for applying for SBI, you often get some kind of certification from your doctor and you're applying directly to the EDD. So often, if you go out on pregnancy disability leave, um, you would be covered by SBI during that time and you would apply to the um, EDD. You would need to let your employer know that you're taking that time, but the application goes to the EDD. So this is a great question because we had a, what was a huge victory, but I think we're going back to it, <laughs> looking at how we can make it a little bit better. But um, we expanded wage replacement from the former 55 percent which is not relevant to this so don't get worry about that number but to 60 percent or 70 percent so 60 percent is the vast majority of california workers if you're on sbi or paid family leave you're getting 60 percent of your wages replaced 70 percent is much more for if you have an income that is around a minimum wage but one of the things we're finding is not a lot of people get the 70% um, during that time. It is meant to help people get more wage replacement. If you, know, if you think about it, minimum wage, 55%, uh, 60% of minimum wage is not that good. Um, we're still working on this legislatively. It's something that we might want to really ramp up more because if you're making minimum wage, it might be hard to get any percentage. You might really want to get 100. But right now, 70% is for a small number of people. And what happens if you lose your job? Yes. Um, now the whole uh, this came up last time, and I didn't get. Um, I feel like there's we might need to write up a whole thing about this for next time because it's a little complicated. But yes, um, if you did lose your job uh, because you didn't qualify for job protection, but you needed to take leave, you could apply for unemployment. The issue with unemployment is that it's never just an automatic thing. Like you qualify, boom, you get it. There's a little bit of your employer being involved, right? So um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and it's not automatic, but nothing about losing your job because of taking leave disqualifies you from unemployment. If that happened to you, for somebody you know, I would just encourage them to apply for unemployment because they need it if they don't have a job. 
And then um, we're in the process of getting a little bit of a, some kind of handout that <laughs> Charlotte can share with people that may go over some of the ins and outs of this, because I think it's a little bit of a legal aid at work and our other legal partner question too. Definitely if you're denied, go talk to a legal group. <laughs> my my opinion and that's not my legal advice just my friend advice <laughs> hey everybody mia here so we only have time for one more question and then we're going to move on with the presentation but know that all of your questions have been recorded and we can work on providing written responses to them for this week's email that you'll all be getting from us so here's the last question jenya so when you're using leave you mean sick and safe days right well you know it's kind of interesting i think and um, definitely, Katie, Charlotte, me, anybody chime in. But I, I feel like that's a part, when we say leave, it's sort of this overarching, you're not at work type of, you know, the way we use it. So we might use it a little bit interchangeably. Often leave is used for a longer period of time, whereas paid sick and safe days are like, you know, individual days that you get at least a minute up to a minimum of three in California. So yeah, I think it depends on what you're referring to, but we, we have used it to mean either sick days or paid family leaves. So I don't know, Charlotte or Mia or um, Katie, if you remember, if you have anything to add to that, if you know, the question might be referring to a part of the training and I'm um, not sure which part. Yeah, so Kimberly, also, oh, yeah. it was a little confusing when talking about sick and safe days. So I'm going to be honest, I've worked with the coalition for seven months now, and probably only a few weeks ago did I fully separate sick and safe days from paid family leave, because they're talked about, first of all, they sound similar, and secondly, they're talked about together. They are two completely different things, two completely different rights, taken for different reasons. So it's my understanding that with sick days, uh, those three sick days that most of us have the right to take with job protection, I could use those sick days if I need to take care of my son who had the flu, for instance. So he doesn't have to have cancer, God forbid, or a serious illness, but paid family leave for caregiving is a longer extended leave that I would take if I had to be with someone through chemo treatment, for instance, or help them recover after surgery. That paid family leave for caregiving is a longer time period for a seriously ill condition, whereas those three paid sick and safe days can be used for taking care of a family member who has a cold or a flu or the fever, and it doesn't take that many days, it doesn't take that much time, but as a mother, I still wanna take time off work, even though I'm not sick, to take care of my son, and sick days can also be used, for instance, if I have the flu. So that's why sometimes we, when we talk about paid family leave, we say, seriously ill family member versus paid sick days are used if you're sick or you want to go get your flu shot or you're just going for your annual well visit. So I hope that makes sense. They're two different things and hopefully I was asking the right question, answering the right question. If I wasn't, please feel free to ask more clarifying questions. And again, I am recording them. So we will get back to you via email. I think at this point in the presentation, we do need to continue on. We have a really great scenario going through the paid leave checklist so that you all can start utilizing that in your, in your work and with people you come in contact with. Go ahead, Charlotte. I was on mute, didn't realize Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. So like, uh, thank you so much, Mia. And like Mia said, she is recording this. We will get back to you um, through email or we also have a Q&A session next week. Um, and, you know, like we, we do use paid leave inter, uh, interchangeably because of the paid leave checklist. When we're using the paid leave checklist, um, and I just want to show this real quick. This is what we sent last week. As you can see, we're asking questions if you're taking time to bond or seriously ill family member, which is a longer period, like Mia said, or if you're taking care just for a few days, which is paid leave. And this is also explained here at the bottom. So if you did not get this, let me know. Mia created this and it's wonderful and it will help you get help you understand uh, what is the right leave and job protection and also uh, clients that you work with or community members that you work with. But to talk about how this works, let's go through a scenario. So Mark is planning to, is planning, is planning to finish the application process to become a foster parent and wants to know what his rights are to take bonding leave once a child place is, once a child is placed with him. 
He is working in San Diego. He has been at his job for five years. He works full time and has about 30 coworkers. Um, so please put that in the chat. What is the first step to know if Mark is eligible for a paid family leave? So we've got some folks saying, does he pay into California SDI, pay into SDI and on the 12, job for 12 months, SDI and the paycheck, okay. does he pay into SDI? Yes, Go that is so good. So yeah, so um, Mark, or if you want to envision a client that you're working with, um, ask Mark if he's been paying to CA SDI. If he does not know, ask Mark if he to check his pay stub. So for example, I'm gonna show this example to Mark or to your client say, Mark has looked at his pay stub and he does pay into SDI. Again, if you see um, that red box, that should be on your pay stub and that means you're eligible. Great job, guys. So next, let's use the paid leave checklist to see if Mark is eligible for job protection. So as you saw in the checklist, this is the first question. Why are you taking time off? It's gonna ask you if you're using it for bonding, adoption, fire, care for a seriously ill family member, taking time off for your own family member's health, which is just three or less days, or to seek um, psychological counseling or services for domestic violence. We, as you can see, we checked bonding uh, for a foster child placed in your home within the past 12 months. So check that. Let's go to the next few answers. A city do you work in? So Mark works in San Diego. How long have you worked there? He has worked for five years. How many hours did you work at that uh, workplace in the past 12 months? Full time, so approximately 40 hours a week. And how many coworkers does your company have within a 75 mile radius? About 30 coworkers. So um, just to visualize this, you can definitely use this visual. As you can see here, FMLA, CIFRA, and MPLA, why are you taking the time off? Um, all across the board, you can see foster child. He has worked for 12 months, at least 1,250 hours, which is approximately 24 weeks. And then the last eligibility, as you can see, is that um, how many employees within a 75 a mile radius. Currently right now it's MPLA is what Mark would qualify for, um, but in the future and it would be CIFRA as that expands. So Mark qualifies for paid family leave for bonding because he pays into SDI like all of you identified, which is great. He can take up to eight weeks of paid family leave for bonding within the first year a child is placed in your home and can receive up to 60 to 70% of his wages. He meets qualifications for job protection under CIFRA, um, FMLA, and MPLA because he's planning to leave to use leave for bonding with a foster child within the first year. He has worked with his employer for five years, worked more than 1,250 hours, and has more than 20 coworkers. So that is essentially, I know that was pretty quick, but that's essentially how you use the paid leave checklist for yourself or someone you're working with. Um, remember these eligibility requirements, right? More, at least one year, 25 hours per week, and the three and four will change, but currently for the next two months, 50 plus employees for caregiving, 20 plus employees for new parents, but that will be expanded to five or plus employees, which is fantastic. To visualize this again, as you see here, how they work coincide each other, eight weeks of paid uh, family leave, and 12 weeks of job protected time off. So within those 12 weeks of job protected time off, Mark will receive eight weeks of partial wage replacement. Um, and um, the rest of the week time he has unpaid um, job protected time off. So I know that was pretty quick, but that is, we just wanted to simulate that and we can do that again next week. Again, we can do another scenario if you guys liked that. Um, any questions? We, I know we only have about three minutes. Uh, maybe we can take one question. Anything else? We'll do an email again and just because we want to do a talk about some next steps for next week. Um, I don't know if we can answer Hilda's question, Jenya, or if we need to take some time to think on that because it was kind of 
I have to look yeah, at the I mean, requirements for sick days. Well, and I do know the requirements, but I think it's one of those weird things because, so yes, Hilda, we should get back to you either way, but the best answer I have right now is that it kind of depends on the employer because frankly, employers have been, before we passed paid sick days in California, they were providing them before. Um, per diem employee doesn't mean you're not accruing paid sick days, but usually that would be an employer policy. And often a per diem employee might not accrue it because they might not work enough hours. In a union contract, often if a per diem works a certain amount of hours, they almost automatically become a regular employee or at least get that option. But I think what we need to do is figure out if what is in the statute, like what is in the regulations about that, if there's something specific. And we're, um, as Mia said, we will follow up with an email because these are some really great questions and I think it'd be really good to share that out with everybody. Yes, so definitely. So we only have one minute. We will answer questions. Go ahead and put them in the chat before you head out. Um, we will be sending out materials. So tomorrow I will send out an email with um, this paid leave with our review slides. So prep for session three, review the slides that we did today, review the paid leave checklist, and review the materials I'll be sending out uh, tomorrow. Um, and then the agenda for next week, we'll do a quick review again of P uh, paid family leave, job protection, and sick and safe days. We're gonna definitely do um, so a couple scenarios and the paid leave checklist and go into breakout rooms, um, and then talk about how we're gonna do ongoing support for all of you. Um, um, and during that time period, um, we're also going to be making sure we'll answer questions. So we'll send an email answering your questions. Um, and if we don't get to them, always follow up with me. So we, I would love to answer all the questions that you have. So it is one o'clock now. Thank you so much. Sorry, the ending was a bit more rushed. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking it out and being here. Hopefully this was beneficial and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.